try not to trip the fall. <laughs> so we're out here to uh, try look at how our saws work. We're about seven miles out of Whitehorse on some of the trails. We have a dead tree here. It's big. And we got uh, four saws. We got the Bob Deustrude saw. So this is a kind of a buck saw design. Very good design. We have what Mr. Kohansky called a timber saw. This is a Baco timber cut with a special type of tooth pattern. We've got a big long one-man saw from Sweden that cuts like a dream. And an army surplus saw that looks like it comes from Austria or Germany. And we're going to give them all a try and we're going to see how they work. So we'll do these one at a time. Thanks. Whenever you see these little crowns, these three crowns, they often mean it's, it's a Swedish piece, and this is an EIA Bushman um, from Sweden. Got an interesting uh, tooth pattern, so it's a little bit like a, an American, although the American tooth pattern often has three. Uh, and it came very well sharpened, so I've only had to just maintain the grind, so it's uh, been a good saw. So let's see how this works. On this dead tree. See the wood coming out? Oh, yeah. That's a very aggressive cut. So, that is the uh, Swedish saw. So, that would get through there. It's also got a nice little hole here where you could put, put a little upright and you could turn that into a two-man saw or you could start your cuts with that little upright piece. Yeah, that's, that's not cutting so bad either. So that's got a very similar tooth set. A little wider, a little more uh, kerf, but uh, aggressive, just a little bit slower. But, you know, it's already warm. The advantage of these is these weigh a couple of pounds, less than two pounds, and uh, they do a lot of work for you. Uh, they're not chainsaws, but my chainsaw weighs over 10, 10, 12, 15 pounds. You only take on a, a board that's about half the distance of your saw. So this saw is a little small, something like this. So you're handicapped by the length of stroke. Now that's also, the Baco comes with a very well curved coarse tooth pattern that works very well. It's called the Timber Cut, and that works quite well. This is the largest Bob Deustrude saw. This is the 30 inch. I started with 22. Loved it so much I ordered the 30 inch and great canoe saw. Um, 30 inch is a far more useful length, still compact. Ended up with two of them. This one came absolutely bent uh, like a pretzel from Canada Post. So I phoned the fella, he said, Don't bother sending it back, I'll send you another one. And uh, I appreciate that. I put this on the anvil, managed to straighten it out so that it's usable, it's not pretty. So this is my beater, and I still got the other guy there for showing off. Now the big advantage of these saws is it's got a much thinner kerf, so they end up being pretty fast. The problem with them is that you can bend that blade, and the blades mostly are impact hardened, which means you have to look long and hard before you can find a blade that is sharpenable. They're also light and they take a little less effort. So long strokes. You should be able to hear the saw. You can use both hands too. Okay. You should be able to hear the saw and sing a little song to you. Go Z Z Z Z. In a nice rhythm. That's nice. Use the full length of the cutting surface. Biggest mistake is people making short little movements. Son, that's really good. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the dust pouring over there. I'm 
really impressed. You're doing a great job. So we used this saw when we lived in Hay River and heated with wood. I used a chainsaw a lot, but every once in a while, just before shot put season, or during the winter season, I would use this saw a little bit too to buck some wood. And I found it really quite amazing for a handsaw. So I have to give it about a A plus, this saw. German saw is maybe a C plus. It's just a bit too thick. Um, the backhoe saw, I really like the saw. Uh, I take that on uh, on trips in the winter time because you don't have to put it together and it's, it's fairly fast for the kind of wood you use to feed the fire, which is maybe six inches to six inches in diameter, eight inches in diameter tops, mostly smaller. And the Bob Dustrude is a great saw we use on our canoe trips, but it's not up to the challenge of big wood like this. It wasn't designed for it though. But again, for six to eight inch uh, wood, uh, it's a very, very good saw. Pretty fast because it's a thin kerf. You just have to be a little more careful with it. And the boy is like a machine. James, are you going to get it done? Are you going to finish it? Holy cow, son. You are a machine man. I'm very impressed with your sawing. And when you listen to students saw, you can really tell when they're making short, choppy, outer rhythm kind of sounds. And James is making a rhythmic sound. Maybe those piano lessons have paid off. And you can hear that good Swedish steel. Can you hear it sing a little? Yeah. That beautiful sound. Son, this is going to be your stool because you've done all the work. Not really. Well, I started the cut for you, but you've done 80% of the work on this on this cut. So this saw is uh, obviously too big for backpacking, but on sled trips in the wintertime, you can take it with you. Fits in the back of the Polaris, and he's going to cut through. Yeah. Son, A+. Plus. A+, plus. let's see you. How tired are you? <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you think if you did that all day? What kind of muscles would you have? <laughs> Crazy. And that's what uh, my dad would have had to do, a lot of that. That's a nice little piece of wood. We'll make a nice stool. And that's cut by James. Good job. Thanks.